Welcome back to Shop Time. Patrick Tipton here, and I'm standing in front of my 1943 Willys MB. And if you watched a couple of the last two videos, you saw I took it on a great trail ride about a week ago and had an overheating issue. So I'm going to show you what I did when I got back off after that trail ride. We'll go watch that video first, and then we're going to come back and finish the diagnosis. So I took a trail ride with the MTA of New Jersey, the Military Transport Association, which is a military vehicle preservation association affiliate club in northwest New Jersey and we took a trail ride yesterday through Warren and part of Sussex County had a great time drove a cheap 120 miles and flawless everything worked fantastically until I got about 15 miles from home and it decided to overheat now I've had a couple of little overheating issues nothing too bad and yesterday was severe so we're going to run through today how we're diagnosing it. your World War II Jeep cooling systems pretty simple operation I got a radiator, I got a water pump, I got a thermostat, I got some hoses and a fan. Basically it. So there really is no good reason for it not to be cooling. And in fact, the radiator and the pump here are more than capable of keeping this Jeep motor at 175, 180 degrees um, in the hottest days of summer. So if it's not doing that, you got to figure out what's going on. So let's talk about what happens. You start your motor up. And there is coolant sitting in the block. There are passages in, the, in your engine block that have the coolant sitting inside of them. And the thermostat, which I've actually already removed and I'll show you. So here's the thermostat, right? So what's happening? We start our motor. The temperature inside of the block is cold. The water temperature is, again, whatever the ambient air temperature is. Let's say it's a nice warm summer day, so it's 80 degrees or something like that. Combustion starts happening. Of course, it's much hotter than 80 and the water starts heating up. Now the water pump is pumping the whole time, but it can't pump anywhere because our thermostat is closed. So it's holding the water that is in the block in the block and letting it warm up, which in turn is letting the actual block warm up. This particular thermostat is marked at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So at 160 degrees, this thermostat, which has a, a temperature sensitive part in it that expands and basically opens up, will start opening up. So the block at this point is 160 degrees, the water, it starts opening this up. And at that point, it lets the water come up this tube back into the top of the radiator. Now the radiator is full of these little tubes going up and down and a bunch of fins and we've got air blown from the fan through there. So that warmer water, it's now 160, starts draining down those tubes and in the process cooling off. And in the meantime, the reservoir at the bottom is getting pumped by the water pump in through the block, in through these various channels and absorbing the heat. And as the temperature rises, this thermostat will open up more and more and more until it's fully open. And at that point, you've got whatever amount of water circulating through or coolant circulating through the block as you have. And so if you're sitting at an idle and you watch the temperature increase, well, that's basically, you know, the thermostat is full open and it's circulating through. Now, with a proper functioning radiator and a proper functioning water pump, what you should have is that the temperature goes back down to something around 160 to 180 degrees. So yesterday I drove the Jeep for four and a half hours and I never saw more than 178. So I was really happy. It was running around 175 pretty much the entire time. So by my calculations, man, that is dead nuts perfect. But all of a sudden I'm driving home and it just popped up like the water wasn't circulating. So I thought about it when I got home. I actually got home, I had to stop a couple of times, and I sprayed water on the radiator. And the reason I sprayed water on the radiator was thinking that, okay, if the radiator's a little warm and the water's warm and maybe something's not working correctly in the radiator side of things, when I spray the radiator and cool it down, I don't want to spray the block because I might crack something, but if I spray the radiator down, I ought to immediately see uh, a big decrease in the temperature. And I didn't, so that was a little bit of a clue. So I thought, okay, for some reason, water is not circulating. So my first suspicion, this is a repro, I won't name and names because I don't think it's the problem, but it's a repro thermostat. So I pull the thermostat out. And when I pull the thermostat out, because I do believe this radiator is good, 
I filled the radiator back up with water because it had overflowed a little bit, and I filled it back up full, pulled the thermostat out, and started the Jeep up. And what I expected to have happen was that the temperature should decrease very rapidly down below 160 because it's now just circulating constantly. And so if everything's in tip-top shape, it, it certainly should be down below 180. And it didn't do that, which tells me again, for some reason, something, nothing was circulating. So we now have, you know, a couple of potential causes. One is that the radiator is full of sediment. How could that happen? This motor came out of a generator and it, I cleaned it as best I could, but it hasn't been run as hard as I've run it the last, I probably run it 500 miles. I've had this problem two, this is the third time I've had this problem. But it's sort of been intermittent like this, so it's, it's kind of hard to figure it out. But um, so I guess theoretically there was so much sediment and what have you in the block that as the thing's been cycling through and heating, cooling, the rust has gotten out there and I filled this radiator up and it's not flowing correctly. I don't think that's what's happening, but that's a possibility. This was a possibility, bad thermostat. I pulled it out, nothing happened, so that's not the problem. The water pump, I had rebuilt my original World War II, uh, my, my original water pump started leaking. So I rebuilt it, I dropped it and broke the impeller. So I had to get another one, I replaced that. But I haven't felt like draining everything to fix it. So I am gonna take the opportunity to put the World War II water pump back on. I don't think this water pump is the problem because it is brand new. Doesn't mean it couldn't have failed, but there's no evidence of failure. Uh, water pumps, again, usually freeze when they fail or they, um, will start leaking really badly and then water comes out. So the other thing I'll tell you is that I was getting some excess pressure and my um, radiator cap was leaking. And so I just put this new radiator cap on and this thing's been working perfectly since I did it. I've had it about a week. And I thought for sure that was just the problem that I had a bad radiator cap that wasn't maintaining pressure. But that didn't solve the problem either. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain there's mostly water in this thing now because I blew it out a bunch of times yesterday and um, I'm gonna go ahead and drain everything out of this. I'm going to take off the water pump and put the new, well, before I do that, I'm gonna take these hoses off and we're gonna see what happens and what kind of flow we get and what it looks like at the bottom of the radiator. I don't, I don't think this radiator is full and I probably will potentially um, fill this thing up and let some water run through it just to see what it looks like. Again, I don't anticipate that this is what's going on. If I do think it's a problem, I'm going to take the radiator out and I'll, I'll get it checked again or do something. But um, I don't think the radiator is a problem. So assuming that I don't find any problem there, I'm going to go ahead and replace the water pump just because I want the right one on here anyway. This one wasn't even painted. I put it on a day before I went on the first trail ride. And so I'm going to put the correct World War II one back on, and then, um, and then I'll take it for a ride without a thermostat and see what happens if we get good flow. Um, and sort of the only other problem, I mean, I could have an engine problem, but the oil pressure is excellent. This motor only has about 200 hours on it. It came out of a generator. So I don't think that's the problem. Um, I could theoretically have a problem with the head and, um, you know, there could be a, a leak in the head or a crack that would be allowing exhaust gases into the um, cooling system. But usually if you have that, you get the other problem too, which is water in the oil and coolant in the oil, which makes for milky oil. And you can't see this, but this stuff's beautiful. So um, I don't think that's the problem either. So let's Take off, let's drain the radiator fluid first, the coolant, and then we're going to pull off this bottom hose after we do that and look and see if we've got a lot of sediment. If I don't see any sediment, I'm not going to bother to pour anything else through it because I know this thing was cleaned out and I'm just going to replace the water pump and, and we'll see where we go from there. Let's do it. a pretty way to do this like I've said before I do this before this way too and everybody said get a 
funnel or a bunch of other things. But anyway, it's draining. This thing looks like ugliness, but it's not that ugly, guys. So I don't think this is the problem. Let's take, let's take the water pump off. Okay, fan off, part one. Part two, loosen up. I think it's a half inch bolt. I don't know if I can fit that in, let's see. Go loosen up the fan belt. Okay. Okay, that's that out of the way. This is also a half inch, you know? Nope. So let's take that off. Here's a rubber mallet. Throw a dead blow hammer. Some more fluid coming out. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this. And it's, you know, it's a little dirty in there, but not dirty enough to cause any problems. So that is not the problem. All right, guys, so this is my original water pump. I rebuilt it. I, as I mentioned before, I dropped it and broke the impeller on the rebuilt one, but so I got a new one. It's all nice and firm. I fortunately managed to Get an extra gasket somewhere, I'm not sure where, but I had one, so that was a good thing. And I cleaned the gasket surface off film here, but so I will put this on. I'm gonna put a little smear of uh, Permatex on both sides, just to, particularly around the screw holes here, and I'll put some on the, on the screws themselves, just to try, I'm not a, you know, the bad news about putting this Permatex and these sealing things on there is that it makes it next to impossible to remove without messing up the gasket. So if you ever do have to take it off again, you're going to need a new gasket. Now, again, in my travels, I guess, like anybody who's done one of these restorations, you end up with uh, a huge number of parts at the end of the day. That's backwards. Um, so... Uh, good and bad news, right? Okay, so there's that in place. And now, we'll put a little of the Permatex on the bolts, which also helps to keep them from getting ugly. You can use Never Seize too. I'm a huge fan of Never Seize actually, but I didn't put any on this one, but. So, again, <laughs> check the torque spec, but it doesn't have to be honked on there, but it should be tight. Let me get this one on here. There we go. Nice and snug. Okay. Tighten that down, we're gonna be in good shape. It's hot today. It was hot yesterday too. It's super hot in the shop. And I don't I usually have my fan on, but it makes a lot of extra noise. So I got it off so we can have this conversation here without too much trouble. So it's two. Let's tighten that up with a little one. Okay, so all I have to do is put back plug for the radiator, which is right here. A little pipe plug drain. Not very pretty, but... Okay, that's probably enough. Okay, so now I'm going to put pure water in this thing. 
not keep it that way permanently, but put this on pause. All right, boys, the moment of truth here. I got it all put back together again. I got most of it done on video, but not all of it. And so at this point, we're going to start this thing up. I don't have the thermostat in place, but, and I have the radiator about 80% full. I'm going to drive it over and, uh, over and fill it up at the water hose, but uh, it's a big mess here. I don't wash this stuff off anyway, but I'm just gonna start the Jeep and drive it over there and I'll take you with me here. Let's go. Okay, lower the hood, no tools, everything's on. I'm not gonna run over anything if I back up. No, big mess on. It's okay, let's see how we do here. <laughs> It should take a little while to warm up because I got no thermostat in there and it may not even want to warm up, but we'll find out here in a second. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Got a little mist there, but you see that right there? 140. So that's about right. It should not be getting any warmer than that. I don't know what was going on. I really, I'm a little baffled. I'm going to put the, it's not that warm. I'm going to go ahead before it gets any warmer. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to put the uh, thermostat back in it. See what happens. So after I did all that work, I ordered a new Bellow style original thermostat and it was billed as a 165 degree thermostat, which is the factory spec for this. And what came in the mail was 180 degrees instead. And so the Jeep is running great and it is not overheating, but it's warming up to about 197 to 200 degrees, which is too hot. So I went today after talking to a couple people and I bought myself this little GM eight cylinder or yeah, for a V8 and it's a 160 degree thermostat. So what I'm gonna do, it's a little smaller the opening, but it does open earlier. So what I'm gonna do is drill a small relief hole like the originals, and then we're gonna install this thing and then we'll take it for a test drive and see if we fixed it. And while we're taking that test drive, I'll probably off camera here, I will narrate for you the rest of what's going on and we'll hopefully have a operating Jeep that won't get hotter than 180. So let's get this done. Look at that beautiful mess we're making. So this is the original style bellows thermostat. They call those the bellows in there. It's working, but it's marked 180 and it's marked two of 52. So it was made in February of 52, but it's marked 180 degrees, which is too hot. So the hole I drilled is a little larger than the original, but I'm not too worried about that at this point. So this goes back in. And it fits in perfectly. And this, again, part of the benefit is that the hole, there's a bigger there's a bigger when this opens up, there's more volume moving through it, which is part of my problem. Um, I think that we're not getting enough volume, but we're going to find out. So we put this back in like so, and I got a little venting going on with that hole we drilled, and uh, we'll put it in and see what happens. Okay, 
tighten these clamps down, and let's go for a Jeep ride. Okay. Then we'll put a little bit of, well, we lost about a, a bit of water. And again, you don't want to run straight water in this because obviously if it gets cold, which it does here, that's good. Um, it will, let's see if we can put some of this in the radiator. Come on, baby. There we go. All right, so we got a full radiator. In fact, it's... At least the grill got a little bit of a wash down, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> so the radiator's full. It's a little over full, but that's okay. And we'll put this back on. And then the only other thing I want to do is get a little of the water out of there. And then we're going to start it, and we're going to watch. And I'm going to keep this microphone on. I don't know how well this microphone's going to work with the Jeep noises, but... We'll keep it on and see how we do. Um, and I'm trying to get, I want to warm this up enough that we don't have water in here because that's a good way to stick your spark plug. All right, can you stop that for a second? All right guys, as I always say, safety first. So we gotta latch ourselves in here. Good job. Now, so the Jeep is cold. You see right here, we got about 100 degrees. I started it to move it just so we could do this so I could drain the water out. So the way I start my Jeep, neutral, key on. Choke out about that much. One, two on the accelerator and starts right up. You gotta like that, huh? And we'll run it with a choke for a second. Um, we do wanna get it warm. Obviously we would like to get it up to operating temperature. It's hot today, it was 85, 90 degrees, so it's not like we're real far off, but so we'll go ahead and take off. But the goal here is the thermostat should rise steadily up to, you know, it, it should warm up pretty quickly to 160, because that's where the thermostat will start opening up. And then it shouldn't go much past that um, until we start putting the load on the Jeep. The other thing to look at, if you look at the amp meter, you see we've got a little positive charge, we use that. So that's working correctly as well. Overall, everything looked good. Let's see what you do. We'll put our, put our lights on so we have some brakes. Brake lights, that is. So we're going to go take a quick cruise. You can show us around. Main thing we're watching is we're watching this temperature gauge go up and it should steadily rise again I don't know how well you can hear me hopefully you can hear me well but the temperature gauge should steadily rise to 160 pretty quickly because again the thermostats closed and there's very little water moving through the system so the engine just warming everything up but once it gets to 160 the thermostats totally open and now you're the it, sh it should be vacillating between 160 and maybe 180. I'd like to see it go to about 170 and just stay there, sort of equalized. But we'll find out in a second what it's going to do. I de it was going up to 200 almost, and that's, that's a little hot. So if you look at it now, see we're getting close to uh, what, 150 now, which again is what I would expect. We're driving 40 miles an hour in the Jeep, driving great. You can check out where we are. We're out here in rural Sussex, New Jersey. So we're now up to 160. So the thermostat should be open. Okay? So ideally, it shouldn't be going a lot higher than this. Now maybe we see 170, but ideally this thermostat is fully open at this point. It shouldn't, I mean I'm gonna push the Jeep a little bit. But I'd like it to stay under 180. So, all right, so I got it. What am I up to now? 170? So I'm driving now, but I'm driving this thing hard. I'm going 48 miles an hour, which again, the placard's supposed to say caution, do not exceed 40 miles an hour at 35. But so see, we're driving hard and it's staying at 170, isn't it? Chokes off. Looks like it's gonna rain on us. Well, it might. So, so we we popped up. We're. Close.
close to 180. see it going over that and if it is then I'm gonna have convinced myself that the reason is because my radiator which I rebuilt is not completely correct and I'll tell you in a second I'll probably narrate this separately well maybe I'll try to narrate it while we're driving and we'll see how it sounds and if it sounds bad I'll re-record it but so this is 180 right now and again if that's as high as it goes I'm happy with that but look it just went over 180 Let's pull over here for a second and just see what she does if we start idling. Does it cool back down? See this church, beautiful church. Take a look. When was it built? 1834. That's pretty cool. All right, so see, now it's doing what it's supposed to. It's now, if you watch something interesting, when I ex put a little more air through the, uh, by accelerating a little bit, I should be blowing a little more air through the radiator. It should come down a little bit coming down a little bit so that's more air through the radiator but all right so it's 175 now we're gonna go on a long straight road we're gonna drive hard and see what happens it's happening now so I'm really happy right we're going almost we are going 50 miles an hour 48 and it's staying right at 180 which is awesome right I mean that's a great temperature for this so I'm, I'm pretty happy so far with my 160 degree, $7, $6.99 GM thermostat. I think I'll post the part number below, guys, if you've got one of these things. But this thing, I drill a hole. The hole I drill was probably about, I don't know, maybe a quarter, maybe a little 330 seconds, something like that. But the one in the original Jeep is smaller, but I'm not worried. I mean, look, it's 180 is a great operating temperature for this Jeep. And if it runs at 180 all the time, Perfect. The only time I might see a problem from that hole would be in the dead of winter. But I don't know that I'm macho enough anymore in my old age to drive this Jeep in the dead of the winter. I might be too much of a... What, Dad? A candy ass, I think, is the technical term. 180, baby. Oil pressure's good. Still showing a very modest uh, bit of charge, which we should, because um, again, it'll be charging almost always, but not much. And all right, so going up this hill, we got a little bit past 180, but it's the minute I let off the throttle, it's uh, coming back down. So when we idle, we'll take a sit here for half a second. And we might get wet here, Junior. Fortunately, fortunately yes, it's still 180. Fortunately, that's called good content. <laughs> if we get, if we get, you go down this way. Sure. We get. Fortunately, the, the iPhone is waterproof. I'm not. You're not. Do you yeah. melt? How are you? Speaking of candy asses, I think that's the. Uh, <laughs> We can bleep that out if we're supposed to, I don't know. So now we're cruising downhill. It's cooled right down to 178. Man, I, I'm loving the temperatures, boys and girls. A little backfire? Yeah, yeah. yeah, probably, you know, it's funny. So one of the other things that I've been doing, I mess with the timing on this thing a bunch. And um, it's one of the reasons why it starts so good. And with that timing messing comes the need to go back and play around a little bit with the mixture on the carburetor and make sure that all that stuff is correct. And I think it's running great, but um, I really have no complaints, but I want to do a little bit more, um, I want to do a little bit more tweaking. The other thing I'm going to do is put a timing light on. It's really hard to see the timing hole it's like way buried down there and if you start reaching around down there you're liable to get whacked by a fan or stick your elbow into the fan or something and uh, so uh, it's a little hard to do but uh, I may use a mirror and try to do it with a mirror so we can see in there but I think this is going to solve the problem so 
My theory about the clogged radiator looks, I may have clogged it a little bit, but it doesn't look too bad. I'm, I'm actually contemplating running some rust remover flush through the block and the radiator, but there's also a part of me that says, you know, they, that whole expression, discretion is the better part of valor. Um, if this thing is driving around at 178 degrees and we're driving it at 50 miles an hour, I probably should just leave well enough alone and quit messing with it. But that's kind of not my nature, you know. I kind of keep messing, right? this problem, gentlemen and ladies. So we're what? 181, 179? Yes, Fresh wet grass on the road. Not a good idea. So you hear that little grinding, I don't know if you guys caught that, but my on the top of the transmission is the pattern for the shifter, and there's a little H cutout that's uh, riveted onto the top cover of that T84 transmission. And those parts get worn over the years, and so you can overshift. And when you overshift, you, you start making it grind a little bit. So. This thing doesn't grind anywhere but going into second gear. You gotta be real gentle, because otherwise you push it too far. And most of the time I don't, but every once in a while I do. And at some point you can buy the shift, the, um, the shift plate is what it's called, is available from most of the vendors. And you just have to re-rivet it on. And I didn't know when I put this back together again that it was worn. I think I would probably do it as a matter of course now just to make sure. But anyway, I just need to pop it off and uh, re-riven a new one in there but since mostly it's me driving this thing I'll let a few other people drive it but like that it doesn't do it if you don't jam it in gear and you shouldn't be jamming it in gear anyway so so 178 all right so I think folks I'll report back at the end of the video if I lied but I think we're good to go we're showing 177 now we got about an eight-minute drive home, so I won't take you any further. I appreciate all the all the comments. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you're learning something. And with that, I'm going to sign off. I am going to be working on the weasel. I've got my plans set for tomorrow. I'm headed back to uh, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, but on on Monday, I have got a shop that's going to bend up the side. So I will have a weasel side bent up, and he's going to let me video it. So I'll show you how we do that on Wednesday. On Weasel Wednesday, and uh, maybe we'll even start uh, marking that thing up and getting it ready to install the various hat channels and ready. Because I, I really, I'd like to be in the next couple of episodes have that side welded on. So, as always, again, appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Get out and shop, make some, keep the corner square. Patrick Tipton at 42 miles an hour in a 1943 Willys MB Jeep. I'm signing off. <laughs>